Hello and good morning, everybody. Good to see you. Paul Tranny here, kind of to dive into today's Photoshop Daily Creative Challenge or Photoshop Typography Challenge because this is a very special week this week. And it is Thursday, so I have today and then tomorrow as we dive into really manipulating type in a very wild way, especially today. As you can see, uh, everything is down below. Uh, feel free to say hello. Maybe I just need a refresh. Uh, but basically, in the description below, you'll see the uh, um, uh, the link to share your work to get the starter file that I'm going to be showing in a second, find more challenges, all that good stuff. And uh, yeah, this is also part of the 36 days of type. So I really want you to like bend type to your will and just get creative with lettering is the goal. I see you there, Susan Wilson, Judith. Uh, Stoney's in the house. Hello, Stoney. I need to make Stoney a logo, and I have not forgotten about you. Uh, just, you know, you get busy. Um, yeah, so I want to welcome you here. Time to fix my hair, and uh, let's dive right into this, because this is the file right here, as you can see. It looks kind of uh, plain, if you get the joke, right? So we're going to have some fun with this as we can see wild typography going to typograph typographic safari by transforming animals into lettering or lettering into animals whichever way you want to look at it it's all about bending types to your will uh, you know so this will be uh, really fun I think so uh, we do need to start out with some text off to the side over here as you can see good morning Nick and Susan Wilson and key as well Jan's in the house so we could turn off right the info right there so we could turn that off and uh, start with some text so I'm gonna select the type tool uh, it can be tricky kind of like showing people how to use the type tool initially which is honestly the the number one used tool well it's the second used most used tool outside of this move tool right but basically it's the most used tool that's why type is so important uh, you get this option bar for all of your tools so you could either use this option bar if you want to set everything in advance uh, but also those same properties are over in the properties panel as soon as we start typing. Uh, so we'll jump in here. I thought about a couple different phrases. Uh, we could go with something like, I'll just do the wilds of. Type in text like that. We could see it's Montserrat is what it's set to. Um, and I'm always looking for fun phrases that I could actually... Uh, right in here as well. But if we do a command T or control T on your keyboard, oh, sorry, I didn't, did I, is that right? Yes, command T or control T. Um, if you're on a PC, you can resize it and that's how you can basically like resize text, right? Just like that, we'll do the wilds of Africa. We're gonna type again, just like so. And then we'll resize this text and we're gonna make this really large and uh, we're gonna have some fun with this text as the goal. We're gonna make it nice and big, like so, okay? Uh, two, we got a two for one today in chat. There's two Susans in chat today. Hello, Susan one and Susan two. Um, if you're watching elsewhere, by the way, um, on YouTube or wherever else, just know I'm mainly watching the, um, uh, there we go, Muhammad, I see you over there. I'm mainly watching the uh, Behance chat, but Muhammad, I do you see you over there on Facebook and I'd like to say uh, thanks for hanging out. So when you get a lot of text in here, you can see all this text, you could change it all at once, just like you can with other items. You can do a shift select. We can change, select all of these and decide to change, say, the color, right? So we could do everything at once, as you can see, changing the color, maybe sampling down here. You get the idea, clicking OK. Right, we could also jump in and start manipulating the type. So, uh, ooh, fun phrase. Text is cool and I ain't lying. I like puns. I'm into it. So this is cool, okay? As you deal with type, you could do you could do so many different things. I usually try lots of different things. So I end up with lots of layer groups, otherwise known as folders. So if you do a command G with all those selected, boom, we have, you know, type example or fun type one or wild type one, right? Command J, right? Another thing you can do, by the way, is you can drag this folder or layer group down to this plus sign and that's another way oops plus sign 
And that's another way of duplicating it, but Command J is just as easily. I'm all here. I'm here for all the the fun puns. Just so you know, uh, we'll jump in here. We can go in here, select. Uh, we've been dealing with Montserrat. We can scroll down and sort of find what type is going to look good in this case. And I'm apologize. It's still a little hard to read. So let's make this black. Now we can see it, and we can start to pick out uh, the font we want in this case. Now, since we're going to be swapping out some of these letters for animals, we don't we don't want the 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 type to have too much character, right? We want it to be as easy to read as possible. So the type the 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 font is not going to do the heavy lifting. I'm going to do all the heavy lifting, right? Just so you know, right? And some of these are really fun, by the way, like this one would could maybe work for Africa, something like that. But either way, that's what I'm doing. So I would either stick with a sans, sans serif or a slab serif, something like that, something like big and chunky. This one's kind of fun as well. This one I used the other day. It's called Kansas New, right? It is um, it's a sans serif, right? But it has all these fun curves like animals will have. So this might work out pretty well. Varun, good to see you, buddy. How you doing, man? Good to see ya. Varun's been doing some blender work and doing 36 days of type, which I think is so awesome. So uh, thanks for hanging out with me, man. Okay, ready for this. We have all these various uh, text layers in here. And what you could do to select them First off, you might already have auto select turned on. And what that means is you could just click on a layer and look at my layers panel. It starts jumping around and selecting those layers. Maybe you want to work that way. Maybe you don't. I always accidentally move things uh, in that case. Uh, two ways to get around that is take your background layer and lock it. Shabam, lock it down or just turn this off, right? And here's your pro tip for the day. Afroja and everybody in, in chat, just so you know, the command key or the control key on PC will toggle the auto select. So that's usually what I like to do. Hold down the control key. Oh, I can select select of. Um, I can actually hold down the shift and control and click on both of those, scale those up, right? We're just going to have some fun today, as you can see. Or you could just e easily use the layers panel. All right. So let's have some fun with some animals. Just like that. Let's take this, put that up there. Take this, move this over here. Have this kind of fit, you know. I feel like when you're dealing with type, it's all about like, it's like a big puzzle. So it's, it's super fun. Oh, Brandon Grotesque, how dare you? How dare you be so... Brandon's a nice guy. Why are you calling him that? Just kidding. Excuse me. Take a drink of my banana nut bread coffee today. <laughs> Crazy. Okay, what's an easy way to change this text? I know we're going to put animals in it. You can put animal patterns in it. We can do a number of things. I want to talk about sort of creating patterns and making things easy. I could jump in here. I have all these animals. I have these animals. I have this background right here. I could do a number of things, but I want to show how to make a pattern really fast and apply it to a letter because that's an easy way for a quick pattern. So right down here, I'm just going to select a patch of this grass, right, just by... Holding down the shift key, I'm just drawing a perfect square. We'll go right up here and we will define pattern. Edit, define pattern. And now we have our grass. There we are. It's not gonna be perfect, but hey, it's good enough for a 30 minute <laughs> demo that I have to do. Okay, right in here. That I really want to do, by the way. I don't have to do anything, let's face it. This is, it's never work when you're in Photoshop, I swear. Okay, Africa, double click right here within this space, but bam, it brings up layer styles. Oh yeah, this is nice. So yeah, we could throw a color overlay on it. We could do a gradient. We could do a pattern. Oh, this is fun. Sure enough, let's go to pattern overlay because I just made this fun pattern right here. Click, and there it is applied across that text. So again, I like how it kind of melts into it. Uh, again, I can play with this some more, whatever. But that's how you quickly make a pattern um, uh, easily. Banana nut bread coffee font. 
<laughs> I just read that in chat. That's funny. All right. So, so far, so good. I could play with this some more. I want to open up the patterns. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Patterns panel really fast. Here's a ton of patterns, right? You have access to all of these. It might not look like this, uh, but this is what I have. So I have dirt. I have stone and all that stuff, right? So there's dirt. I could just as easily go into this panel and start clicking on some of these uh, and get some unique looks. But let's let's go ahead and turn these into animals is what I want to do, okay? And notice when I have that text layer and I click on a pattern, it does exactly what I did a second ago, right? Which means right over here, it adds this pattern overlay, just like I did for the word Africa up here, right? So it adds it the exact same way. It's just one click away. If you want to get a ton more patterns, just so you know, everybody, click right here, this little fly out menu, go down to legacy patterns and more, right? Uh, personally, I don't know where they exist. Like I actually, I think they're actually already on my hard drive, in which case I'm like, hey, why didn't you just show the legacy patterns? But that's what all these are. That's how, that's where I got the dirt and all that, right? So you have all these legacy patterns. There's so many in there. So take advantage of them uh, or make your own, right? Okay, cool. Now you know about patterns. Just kind of cleaning it up a little bit. I'll do that with maybe a couple of these other ones really fast. Um, uh, uh, another pro tip. Zoop. Let's go right here. I'm going to take wild. Hold down the option key. Click, drag. Oh, thank you very much. Option key. Click, drag. Oh, thank you very much. I went and applied that style to those other, other two um, uh, text layers, which I think is super cool. Right? So far, so good. We have our fun animals. Let's get this started. Right? So we could pick the animals that we want. We could pick them based on the... Um, background. We, we're really going to get into selections now, okay? So we need to determine which which animals go where. And trust me, all of this, these colors and all that stuff is going to change. So um, I'm going to have some of them stick out. I think we have to go with a giraffe, right? We got to put a giraffe in there, right? And we could kind of hand select it, if you will. And uh, really, we don't even have to do the selecting. Photoshop does it for you, because what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the object selection tool. It goes through, analyzes the image, right? So it's analyzing. It's like beep, boop, beep, boop, beep, boop, beep. Analyzing. Oh, thank you very much. And it will select any one of these if I click on it. Um, so that's what I'm going to do right here. I want this giraffe, right? Click. And then it selects that giraffe. Can you see those uh, marching ants as they're known? I've selected that giraffe. I could do a, a copy and paste and paste that on a new layer if you want to. Super easy. Or you could create a layer mask, whatever. Okay. But that's all I'm going to do, right? Because this is fast. We need dancing zebras and zamping dancing giraffes. So this is my GRA. Uh, this is where I get judged for my spelling. I don't know if that's how we... Hey, we're too busy. We're too busy doing art to see if things, uh, you know, spell <laughs> are spelled correctly. We'll do a right-click convert to smart object because I don't know how big or small I want this giraffe to be. So I want to be able to retain all those pixels if I make it smaller or larger. So uh, that's what I'm doing. Boom, boom. Bring it right over here. And we could place this uh this giraffe right in here now we need to cover up the feet a couple different ways we could do that we could totally tweak the 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 twerking the neck of the giraffe i thought you said tweaking but varun that's a comment i just read we can we can control this all we want because if i want this giraffe to stand up a little taller we can go into uh puppet warp i did this a couple days ago click 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 Move that over, right? And we can make this giraffe say, stand up a little straighter so we can make sure that this is red as an L. Okay. Yeah, not too many occupations say select. It's ridiculous. This creative, creative careers are ridiculous. They're too fun to be real. Come on. Okay, so we've learned how to select an animal easily. Uh, we could also jump in and uh, select this L, for instance. So I basically need to, don't get disturbed, I want to cut the legs off this giraffe. This, 
You could do this a thousand different ways. This is probably how I would do it. I would go down to this layer and I would do a command click. You could go to any layer and just do a command click on a Mac or control click on a PC. And um, it, will, uh, it will turn that into a selection. So it makes that selection. Now I need to apply that selection as a layer mask. So any selection you have, you can have as a layer mask right here. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go down to the bottom of my panel. I'm doing so much zooming. And we'll click right here. We'll add a layer mask, boop, right? It puts it inside of the uh, letters, right? That's, that's the way I wanna do it. Some of you are saying, I could see some people saying, and we could always do this, let's get rid of this. Another way of doing that mask, if we just wanted this draft to appear within this text, I can come down here and there's a problem with this. I know exactly what's going to happen. So let me just turn this off. Uh, we could do a right click and then we can do a clipping mask. What a clipping mask does is it will mask the giraffe with whatever layer is beneath it. So it will put it inside, right? So there's that option as well. Uh, but again, I want to, um, I want, I want more control than just that. So we want him to stick out at the top. I'll just take this text, like do a, excuse me, do a selection with the rectangular marquee tool, and then I'll fill it. Go to edit, fill. I'll just fill it with the foreground color. We're gonna fill it with white. We could easily just as, we could just as easily paint, right? But what does this look like now? This is my mask and there's my animal. So we're masking out the bottom of the letters and then we have all this open space to manipulate this draft, right? So that gives me the ability to move this around, right? Some of you are thinking, oh, if you move this, what's gonna happen? If we move this, oh, I wanna move him over a little bit. Oh no, he's, he's broken, he's outside of uh, the text. Well, that is because this is actually linked. So we wanna unlink it, boom. Now we can move this uh, the layer contents separate from the layer mask. So we'll go to the giraffe, and then we can move this giraffe over here, right here, right? We could start to position this anywhere we wanna position uh, this giraffe, which is super cool. So now we can start adding these other animals and even making this one bigger, right? Cause I'm thinking, oh, I wanna make it bigger? Sure, do that, Paul. Zoop. Make it a little larger, like so. That's really ridiculous, I don't like it as much. Uh, let's add more to this now that you know the process. Um, and uh, we could add some more animals. And this might change a lot because I think once we start getting them in there, uh, we will realize kind of what was working and what isn't. Um, and that's what I'm doing. I'm looking at the letters and I'm trying to decide... Uh, what would fit for some of these. So I'm gonna come over here. This is what I'm gonna do. You ready for this? Use my object selection tool. If you don't wanna wait for this process, there's more customization you can do right up here. A lot of times I could use the lasso tool, right? And I, don't, I could even turn this off. Say, turn off object finder. I just wanna grab this giraffe here, and I'm sorry I'm dealing with another giraffe, but the giraffe is the best shape for letters, let's face it. Right, there we go. I've just quickly drawn a, a mask or, or drawn around it with my object selection tool, and there's my giraffe. Command T, flip horizontal, make it a smart object, shrink it down, zoop, bring them over here, right, like we did earlier, but we want to like maybe manipulate it a little further, so we will go to puppet warp, Add some pins, pin, pin, ba, jeba, gura, like that. There we go. That's just like another option we can work with is have this giraffe be this, uh, this F. Will that work or not? I don't know, people. I don't know. It's actually grabbed, uh, accidentally grabbed that foot there. Let's go back out, there's that. All right, so we have a giraffe here. We have too many giraffes, but we'll fix this. 
right? This might be a combination of, and let me come back in here again. Let's, here's my puppet war. Oh, wrong one. Get in there, Paul. Do it. Do it. Do it. Stretch it out. Make it happen. Okay. So there that is. And now we're going to do, we have to do the opposite. So we need to actually get rid of the F up here and other such things. So I knew this was going to be a tough one today. I knew it. I knew this was going to be hard. I'm going to go through the same process of making a selection, turning that into a layer mask, right? Here's current the la currently the layer mask down here. I'm going to do the same process of like chopping off the top of the letters, right? So you could do this again a number of ways, whether you want to use the paintbrush. I usually go to fill and I'll fill with foreground color. Who knows the shortcut for filling with the foreground color? There's a shortcut key and that is option delete. And then what you do is you do command delete will fill with the background color. So you learn little shortcuts. There that is. We're going to do the opposite. Like I said, I'm going to the word Africa right over here. And this may or may not look good, but in this case, I'm going to add a layer mask and then maybe paint with a brush. So we'll just go up here. We'll pick a nice brush. We'll paint with black, which means it's going to remove. So we're going to remove that right there. So that's all I'm doing in this case, like zip. Something like that is what I was thinking. Is this working or not? I don't know. Guess what? First time, right? There's our F. Could be larger. We could play with this some more. Um, but I think this is really fun. So let's just kind of have some fun with our last uh, five or so minutes. We'll look at our animals. We'll look at our text. We'll see which ones fit uh, in these lovely little spots. Like we could take, we could have some fun cause we don't have to fill, um, we don't have to fill everything with, uh, with animals. We could have some of these animals on top as well. Oops. I'm on the wrong layer. Let's go down here and we'll select this. Copy paste. There you are little buddy. Convert you to a smart object so I can make you large or small and it's not really going to hurt the quality. We can go up here. There's our lovely little uh, owl sitting right there. You get the idea. Uh, oh, thank you. So Penny mentions in chat an ostrich is a good shape, uh, but where? Same thing with this. Like alligator is a great shape, but kind of at the wrong angle. Ooh, this, this uh, water buffalo is a great shape. So again, using my object selection tool and I just turned off object finder, but I'm going to jump in and are those two attached? Oh, look at how magical object finder is. It, this, it didn't even select this one at all. Selected this one, the exact one that I want, even it removed the inside there. And yeah, it needs some cleanup, but Hey, that's pretty darn good. Let's get you in there, buddy. Just resting, just hanging out. I liked the idea of um, a lot of these kind of being in and outside of the text. So maybe this one's this A. I don't know. Right? You guys got it. Is it a wildebeest? Oh, yeah. Water buffalo has bigger horns. You're right. It's probably a wildebeest. Okay, same process. It's about melding text with or, or lettering with, uh, with animals. So we'll go to Africa right down here. We'll do option, or excuse me, control click. There's my selection. Ready for this? In this case, I actually want to create a mask. There's my mask. B for brush. And then we can just paint with white. So now I'm just kind of having them spill out kind of like that. That's kind of cool. Maybe this hole is not needed, but I don't know. Shortcut to convert for a smart object is a shortcut you need to add yourself. So I just have that baked. I, I modified the, the shortcuts. Uh, that was just an answer in chat. And there's a lot more I need to do. But I gave you this file and you guys have all these fun animals that you can work with. This zebra, oh, come on now. Like color alone is just amazing. So 
Totally into it. It's my last animal, just because I think it looks so cool. Let's see how it does. It's a black and white, and it's on white. Is it going to select it? Well, Paul, you first need to select the right tool. Let's see the selection job that happens here. Boop. There we go. Copy, paste, boom. Smart object, shortcut, shrink it down. You know, maybe this is actually the R. So I take this, I'd flip it horizontally. Boop. There it is. And uh, I would have them start to come out of that R possibly. Uh, so you, you get the idea, folks. There we are. Tsh, tsh, bam. Inside. Beaver brush, painting with white, bring him back. There you are, buddy. There you are. And maybe erasing this side as well. So again, a lot you can do. If you are modifying text, make sure you don't, don't mess with the first or last letter, right? Or you're not gonna re be able to read it as well. So that's just the general golden rule. You'll see magazine titles, they never mess with the first or last letter, right? Un understand how many word, if you couldn't read the R, if that was gone, how many words have a, a different letter there? Because uh, we don't want to confuse people. But you guys get the idea. Have fun. Export that out. Post it at the link below. Share your work. We'd love to see it. And thank you so much for hanging out with me, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye.